The constant exposure of today's school-age children to technology, ranging from smartphones and social media to TV and tablet-based online courses, has led to a widespread issue of excessive screen time among the children aged 6 to 14. This has now become a major public health problem in high- and middle-income countries. The detrimental effects of excessive screen time on the health of school-aged children include emotional sleep and behavioral problems, as well as impacting their growth and cognitive development. As we continue to create awareness about how children are supposed to interact with screens like phones, tablets, laptops and TVs, today we bring you to Sassi College School where we had interesting discussions with staff and students. Continuing our mission to promote responsible screen usage among children, today we visited Chisasa College School, where we engaged in thought-provoking discussions with the school staff and students. Alhaji Latif Sebagala, the director of the school, notes that there is no way the media can be sidelined since this is the era the world is in. When it comes to our children, we are between a stone and a hard rock. That these gadgets like the phones, are being used by our learners, by our children. And of course, that is the only way to go. That many applications, many lessons can take place on those gadgets. And if they are used well, they are very effective in as far as learning is concerned. However, his biggest concern is on how to control these gadgets such that students can use them for productive purposes. The other side of the coin is that how can we control these gadgets? Because they are the same gadgets that our learners, our children can learn behaviors that are not ours, can get information which is not appropriate to their age can open up various applications that don't match their understanding and their age. What can we do as parents, as teachers, as guardians of these children? We need to have a, a, a holistic approach in how we could handle these gadgets so that they don't become harmful to our learners, to our children. The director highlighted some of the things that should be done in case phones are to be allowed in schools. If they are allowed to have phones, what control measures have we put in place? Because at times it may be very difficult to say, don't use laptop, don't use uh, those gadgets. But if you are to allow them to use those, these gadgets, you must get an expert. How that expert must be in position to block all those apps all those applications that don't match our learners' age, our children's age. The pornography on these gadgets is killing our learners, is killing our children. Therefore, if we are to have these gadgets to our children, we must ensure that we get experts who can block channels that we feel or apps that, apps that we feel are very dangerous to the lives of our children. The head teacher of the school, Sekamata Ibrahim, says it is a collective responsibility for all the players. He, however, doesn't buy the idea of young children having phones. This is a role to be played by very many parties. Number one, we must have a role played by a parent at home. Let me begin with at home. If you're giving your child a phone, first of all, to me, I support, or I support a parent buying either laptop or these smart TVs so that a child can use such a public gadget to have education. But I may not support a parent buying a phone, a personal phone, to a primary kid, even secondary, mostly all levelers. But they can be having a laptop, having data, and they make research. He advises parents to have timely tasks for children before they give them phones. Parents, don't buy phones, personal phones to these children before you give them a task. Before senior four, no buying a phone. Before senior six, no buying a phone. Before, but now parents, because of the too much love we have got, we end up giving phones to seven kids, which I'm not say, agreeing. That phone results to problems. All of us use phones to call, to call our people, businessmen and women, relatives in villages. A P7 kid is calling who? 
a senior one, two, three, four is calling who? Mommy is a fist payer, dad is there, you stay at home, you are, you, they, you are still being given care of the parents. So, whom are you calling? So, parents begin with, don't buy phones as gifts here as what? A phone shouldn't be part of the gifts you give to children at a tender age before they resume. Some of the students we interacted with shared the importance of allowing gadgets in schools, which is for research purposes. So we must not uh, re remain in the other culture thing, whereby students are not allowed in, phones, uh, in schools with phones. They can use phones in schools, they can use them for research, they do a lot of work because their lessons actually stop at around 3.15, they are 3.20, you never, you, they can do a lot of work with the phones, they can do their research. However, uh, people look at it as an, a disadvantage, which is actually the case, because they must uh, use them for some other purposes. But then even at, uh, at home we see these children and these students having the phones. So, what's the difference? I think phones should be allowed in schools because uh, phones are needed in this curriculum. In this new curriculum, we need phones uh, to search work because you'll find a question saying that uh, research about this and this, uh, where you need a phone, uh, a book in a library, but a phone is better because when you search on a phone, you will get more information about that thing. They however suggested what can be done in order to regulate the use of these gadgets. You can install CCTV cameras and I believe they do some good work. They can actually sense and then show you what the learner is actually doing on the computer. The same thing can be done. Or oh, well, someone can be a person's keeper. They can report someone who is doing the who, the who is doing the wrong with a phone, and actually these people can be sensitized. You know, sensitization having to know something very well gives you a good direction. Uh, I think uh, the school should get like more supervisors or more teachers, such that when each person is searching, the teacher should be there to see what are you searching. Are you searching work or uh, for me, it's a must. It's a must I should have a phone because a phone helps me to do many things like those videos on TikTok. I use a phone to record the videos. I use a phone to post. I use a phone like <laughs> to take pictures, everything like in my music career, a phone is needed. Excessive screen time has become a common behavior among children and adolescents around the world. Intervention measures to control children's screen use should be explored in combination with different uses to reduce the proportion of non-essential uses. However, some high-income countries such as the United States and Germany have developed guidelines for the restrictions on digital media overuse across age groups, while some low- and middle-income countries have not developed such screen time guidelines. This is Screen Time Series. Join us as we save the young eye.